Hey guys, Tapping here. Today I am super excited to share with you that I have a version 2 Reverb G2. So, for those who don't know, uh, version 2 involves getting a new cable, so that's like the revision 2 cable. And there's also the face gasket, which is a little bit slimmer and comes with a spacer, so that you can actually get your eyes closer to the lenses. And HP claims that it has a 30% larger vertical tracking volume. And this is very interesting. I was like, oh, what does that mean exactly? You know, like how much of an improvement is this actually? So that's what this video is going to be for. It's for those of you who want to learn about how much of an improvement this tracking really is. So I'm gonna do comparisons with the Reverb G2 version one, um, which was the video that I did way back November last year. So if you wanna know everything about the G2 tracking, uh, I highly recommend that video. This video will not be fully comprehensive as that one was. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to be highlighting the differences and I'm just gonna be discussing what the difference is between version two and version one tracking. Yeah, I mean, first let's just test HP's claim, right? They say larger tracking volume. Let's see how much larger it is. In this test, I'm going to be using a green screen setup. I've talked about this before. I don't use any extra lights. It's just one light. And yeah, the green screen doesn't cover much of my area other than just behind me. You know, it's not like a whole room of green screens. In fact, my tracking tests were done in this room. <laughs> so basically, I don't really have any issues with the green screens, but uh, if you're not convinced by it, I also show some footage without the green screen. Other than me showing you the mixed reality footage, I don't usually use a green screen. So yeah, I think that's it. I mean, without further ado, I guess, you know, I'm gonna be in Beat Saber, and when the sabers go away from my controllers, you guys know the drill. That means that I'm going outside of the tracking volume. Yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at the tracking volume. Okay, so that's the tracking volume footage, and you can see that, indeed, the tracking volume actually did improve from uh, version 1 to version 2. So the main areas I, I noticed the improvement is in the upper limit, where you can see that, you know, you can actually go a little bit higher before losing tracking in the version 2 headset, and the lower limit, where, again, you can kind of go a little bit lower in the version 2 headset. Um, it doesn't look like much for the upper limit in the footage, but... I will say that it feels like a lot in the headset um, because the difference just happens to be right at the edge of um, what you can see in the display. So in version one, when you went above your headset, you just, you saw the controllers lose tracking like in your field of view. Um, whereas with this one, it's like just on the edge or like just outside. So that means that it feels better. Um, not necessarily that you're getting a huge benefit from it, but it just, it looks better. For the lower limit tracking volume, uh, again, yeah, we had some improvement, and I will say that it's, you know, it's a relatively small improvement, I would say, but it's in a region where it really helps out a lot, right, you know? Um, for me personally, I find it most beneficial in the menus, so like if I'm using menus and stuff, 
I'll be holding my controller kind of like by my chest or by my waist. Yeah, so those are kind of the main things to see from the tracking volume, I think. And so these tracking volumes, I think, were increased because um, the camera FOVs, like the, the field of view that the cameras see, must be a little bit larger. So I think they just replaced all four cameras, actually, because I think even the side cameras were also getting higher and lower tracking volume limits. So yeah, it just seems like they just replaced the cameras with wider FOV lenses or something like that. That's my interpretation of how they did this. And the cameras are the same in appearance, like the headset looks exactly the same as the version 1 headset as far as I can tell. Um, so there's no like visible difference in terms of how the cameras were placed or anything like that. And so I'm going to repeat like all of the tracking tests that I did previously, but for the most part um, the main difference really is just going to be the tracking volume because, you know, they're using the same software, right? They're both Windows Mixed Reality reverb g2 headsets like they're they're going to have very similar predictive algorithms and stuff like that so we'll go through them quickly first thing i'm going to show here really quickly is the tracking recenter speed test honestly this test is kind of dumb <laughs> i don't know why i'm showing it to you guys <laughs> of course they have the same response time yeah they're using the same software so yeah that's basically really it to take away from there and again this is not you know i don't have like a high speed camera or anything like that so this is just it was originally done specifically to compare Quest and G2, really. Now, for the other predictive tracking tests, I wanted to show uh, differences in terms of how the headsets might be handling some of the common motions in VR. So, like grabbing from the belt, throwing overhand, you know, kind of all the classic stuff. So, I just did a few of those tests again. And so, showing them here, uh, really, the story again is that both headsets handle it pretty much identically, I would say. With the exception maybe of some of the belt area motions I felt like were a little bit smoother to me. But yeah, for the most part, you know, they're both using the same software. They're both extremely similar headsets. So yeah, there you go. So I actually don't have too much more to say about this for now. Just keep taking a look. But if you like this content and you find it useful, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, it really helps out a small channel like mine quite a bit, and I'm pretty close to hitting a thousand subscribers, which would be a pretty sweet milestone to hit. But anyway, let's get back to the video. And I also show occlusion here, and again, I'm gonna repeat myself from my last video. Occlusion with this headset really is not an issue. I'm showing here when you line up the controllers perfectly, you can lose the tracking. So I'm really showing the tracking limitations here, but it feels awkward to hold the controllers like that. It's not how you would normally hold them. Even if you were holding a gun or anything else, usually there's a slight offset. And so occlusion, I really don't find to be an issue on this headset. Cool, okay. You know, I've basically shown you all of my tracking tests and all the footage and you can look over it and kind of go into all the details and see what you can pick up out of it. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys find anything interesting from the footage. But yeah, at the end of the day, how is actually playing with this headset, right? How are the games? Admittedly, I haven't had as much time to play games with this headset as I had with the version one, to be fair, but I can tell you my first impression, at least, and my first impression is that these two headsets perform very similarly, honestly. In fact, I would go as far to say as if HP had replaced my version 1 headset with version 2 uh, under my nose without, without telling me, or if they had just never made an announcement that there was a difference, then I wonder how long it would take me to notice. I don't think I would notice right away. It's not something that's in your face obvious, right? The tracking is very similar and it makes sense. It's the same headset. I mean, you know, I think I think people really like to point out the differences and that's obviously HP wants to market it properly, but it's the same headset, guys. Like it's uh, it's very similar. I was kind of surprised though because I was expecting a little more and so I think I think that's also kind of why I'm having this opinion. Um I don't know if this is a hot take or not. Like maybe I'm crazy. Uh if any of you guys have had the opportunity to try a version 1 and a version 2 headset, uh, let me know what you think. Do you see a big difference? For me, it's not a huge difference. Now, that being said, 
I also want to point out there is a difference and you can notice it if you look for it. So again, like I said, in the menus, that was the main area that I noticed it. And then maybe with a few of kind of certain motions around the waist, maybe I wasn't losing tracking quite as often. So, you know, it's kind of just like a small, I would say quality of life thing. So it feels better. Like I think the headset feels better than the version one headset. So I guess, you know, for those of you with a version one headset who are thinking about the version two headset just because of the tracking, right? I would say it's probably not worth it just for tracking. Um, I mean, it's, it's still gonna be a very similar experience, I would say, you know, it still feels like it some, has some of the same pros and cons of the original Reverb G2 tracking. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I was expecting more. I don't know what to say about it other than it felt very similar. Um, and so, like I said, if you want to learn more about the Reverb G2 tracking in general, uh, again, I refer to you to my previous, much more comprehensive tracking video. And I do want to just repeat myself here in case you don't jump to that video. Uh, the G2 tracking, version one or version two, is pretty much fine, honestly. It's not like the end of the world, like you might sometimes see out there in reviews. In terms of like actual gameplay and actual like practical benefits, I really didn't feel like this headset was, you know, like the Reverb G2 version one or version two. I didn't feel like either one really held me back from being able to play my games or, you know, anything like that. But at the same time, yeah, I think the tracking could be better, but yeah. That's my two cents. Um, so yeah, like I said, let me know if you guys have any opinions on the version two versus version one tracking. I think that it's a really nice improvement and I give kudos to HP for doing it. Their VR team is amazing. They really care about all this stuff, right? Revision two cable and face gasket two are things you should look out for as well. And yeah, I think that it's good that they're looking out for good that they're looking out for the tracking. Yeah, I guess that's all I have for this video. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure I got it out before I am not on my computer for the next two weeks. So I hope you guys have uh, happy holidays and take care.